Welcome Voxel fans! This is a continuation of the rigging and animation tutorial for VoxEdit. If you haven't watched the rigging video yet, there's a lot of important information on what all the buttons and panels in the rigging mode do, which will help you understand the animating process in this video. Not as critical to understanding the animation, but important for knowing how we got these objects in the first place is the modeler tutorial where I built this character. You can find links for both of these in the top corner and the video description. This video is sponsored by the Sandbox Creator Fund. The Sandbox is an upcoming game featuring assets created with VoxEdit. To learn more about the Sandbox and the Creator Fund, visit sandbox.game or see the links in the video description. So let's open up our file for our little friend XB. I'm posting a download link for his files, but you won't be able to open them until the new VoxEdit version is made public. I'm working in pre-release 0.12.0, so some things will look different and be incompatible with the current release of 0.3.15. If you give me a follow on Twitter or Facebook, I'll announce when the new version of VoxEdit is released, so you can practice on the same file I used in this video. To get started with animation, let's get friendly with the timeline panel. First we see the playback controls with the jump to first frame, stop, play, and jump to last frame buttons. Next we see a time display. VoxEdit animations play at 24 frames per second, even though the program is likely to be running at around 60 frames per second. The first frame is at 0 seconds and 0 frames. Counts up to 23 frames, then the next frame is 1 second and 0 frames, and so on. The longest animation currently possible is 20 seconds, or specifically 19 seconds and 23 frames. This is likely a lot longer than any single animation you'd want to make for the sandbox. Next to the time display is the timeline, which shows visually the 23 frames as tick marks between the numbered seconds. The orange arrow is the playhead, displaying the current frame viewed in the work area. New to this update of VoxEdit is the ability to create multiple animations. By clicking on the name of the default animation, called Idle, a drop-down menu appears with a button to create a new animation. This current green look is just a placeholder for the pre-release, and will probably look different in the next update. We could create an idle animation for the rig, which would be its default state when inactive in the game. But let's make something more interesting. Clicking New Animation prompts us to type a name, and I'm going to call it Run. You'll see where idle used to be, it now says run. Clicking on run, both animations are now listed in the drop-down menu. Taking a peek at the rig folder, we can see an idle.vxa, vxa being short for voxel animation, but no run.vxa. First we have to click the save button in voxedit, then any animations we've created will be in the folder. Looking back to the animation selection menu, we can right-click on an animation to rename, duplicate, or delete the animation. While it's possible to delete the idle animation, VoxEdit recreates it when you open the file again, hinting that it is essential for how the assets work in the sandbox. With our run animation selected, we can see each node is listed on the timeline with a keyframe indicated by a diamond on the very first frame. Each node has an icon which can be used to hide the attached object. This is helpful if large objects are obstructing your view to control another node. This cannot be used to hide objects from one animation that are used in another, for instance, a weapon being held. If you hide it on one animation, it's hidden on all of them. To make an object hidden for part or all of an animation, you can set its scale very small and hide it inside a larger object. Next to the eye icon is a padlock, which will prevent moving or deleting keyframes, although it is still possible to add new keyframes and transform the nodes on those keyframes. This might change in a later version to prevent any edits to that node on the timeline. At the end of the node name in the timeline is the new keyframe button. This will create a keyframe for the given node at the location of the playhead, as long as a keyframe there doesn't already exist. A new keyframe always defaults to the same position of the keyframe before it. Finally, we get to the good part. This is what everything has been leading up to. I'm going to make an animation that is one second long, and I want to start by setting the motion of the hips. This means I'm moving the core elements first and working my way out to the limbs. I make sure I've selected global transformation so all children nodes are affected, and then I highlight the bottom node. I want the hips to swing with Y and Z rotation so the leg coming forward lifts and rotates the hips. To make this easy for myself, I put the playhead at one second and press the new keyframe button. This way the animation starts at the same point it ends for a matching loop. Then I move the playhead to frame 6, and set the bottom's Y and X rotations to 10 degrees each. Finally, I set the playhead to frame 18, and set the Y and Z rotations to 350 degrees, the exact opposite of frame 18. 
If we scrub the playhead to frame 12, exactly between 6 and 18, we can see that the rotation for X and Z both say 0 degrees. If we press the play button, we can see the hips swing side to side in a perfect loop. But it looks funny, sort of stiff. This is because by default, keyframes are linked with linear acceleration. Nodes move from keyframe to keyframe evenly dividing the distance traveled by each frame, with no sense of speeding up or slowing down. When a body part moves and then changes direction, we see it slow down before reversing. To fix this stiffness, we can use acceleration curves. Right-click and hold on the time between keyframes. If it's 6 frames or more, you should see it actually say linear. You will see a bunch of options on the menu, and hovering over one and releasing the mouse click will select it. Instant makes the node jump from one position to the next in a single frame located between the two keyframes. This is good for making hidden objects suddenly appear or creating jumpy robotic characters. Linear, as described before, evenly divides the distance between each position for each frame, perfect for smoothly moving objects that don't change direction or speed, like spinning rotors on a helicopter. The next six are a little more complicated. They're grouped into quad and cubic, which refers to the severity of the acceleration curve. From the icons, you can see quad is smoother, while cubic is sharper. For more gradual acceleration, you use quad, and for rapid changes, you use cubic. Ease in, ease out, and ease in out describe if the motion is accelerating, decelerating, or both. When you ease in acceleration, the motion starts out slow and speeds up. Ease out acceleration, or rather deceleration, starts fast and slows down the motion as it gets to the next keyframe. Ease in out starts slow, speeds up to the top speed in the middle, and then slows down again. For our use in the hips, we want the aggressive cubic motion because the character is running and quickly snapping the hips side to side. It might feel counterintuitive, but we're going to start with cubic ease out between the first two keyframes then cubic ease in out in the middle, and cubic ease in between the final keyframes. This is because the fastest motion of the hips is on frames 0, 12, and 24, when the hips are switching from left to right and right to left. Pressing play to look at the motion, this has a nice even stride and feels like it has some actual weight and flow to it, not all stiff like the linear motion looked. If you'd like to compare the difference between quad and cubic acceleration, we can duplicate the whole XB skeleton. This will also copy all the keyframes we just made to the new nodes. We'll call this XB2, and with the parent node selected, drag it to the side. We can now change the motion on the duplicate to quad and compare the difference. It's a very subtle change, but we can see that the original on the right snaps the hips harder, while the copy on the left is a smoother motion. What you prefer is really up to you and how you want the animation to look, but both are far better than the linear or instant options in this case. Next come the legs, which I'll do one at a time. There's more nuanced ways to make a run loop that look very fancy, but for our simple monster with no knees, we're just going to do a basic swinging back and forth. Just like the hips, the fastest points for the legs are in between the big swings back and forth. Selecting the left leg, I set up my middle position, which is spread out on the z-axis to 15 degrees, and slightly rotated out on the y-axis to 345 degrees. Because of the way rotation acts I work, this will automatically change the x-axis to 2 degrees. But if you manually type in these numbers or do the y before the z, the x value might be different. Rotation can be a little finicky. It doesn't need to be exact, just close. A rotation of a couple degrees in this case is not very visible. We can simply press the new frame button at one second to make a duplicate frame. If you place the keyframe in the wrong spot and need to move it, you can always hold left click on it and drag it to a new position. Now moving to frame 6, the left hip is forward. I rotate the leg forward 50 degrees on the X axis, which will automatically shift the Y and Z axis, but they don't need to be adjusted. Finally, on frame 12, I'll rotate the X axis back to 315 degrees, again ignoring the offset on the Y and Z. After setting the acceleration curves to cubic ease out, cubic ease in, out, and cubic ease in, like I did on the hips, we can press play to see the animation. This is looking pretty good. Moving over to the right leg, we repeat the process, but we flip some of the rotations. This is as simple as subtracting the left leg rotation from 360 degrees and using the result. Anyone who told you there's no math in art was lying. Math is very important for art. Fortunately, this is pretty easy math, and your computer has a calculator. 
the right leg Y axis rotates out 15 degrees, and the Z axis 345 degrees. Notice that the X was automatically rotated to 358 degrees, or the opposite of 2 degrees. Now on frame 6, the right hip is back, so the leg rotates back to 315 degrees, like it did on the other side, and 50 degrees forward at frame 12. After setting up the acceleration curves with the same cubic ease out, cubic ease in out, and cubic ease in, let's give it another preview. The last feature I have to show you is another new one that isn't released yet, the keyframe stretcher. This allows you to easily lengthen or shorten your whole animation without having to move the frames one by one. Let's say we want XB to run faster. All we have to do is hold shift and left click on three or more keyframes to select the keyframes between them, and lines will appear on either side of the selection. You can shift left click to add more keyframes to the selection if you need to. Then click or hold the bar that appears to stretch or squash the amount of time between those keyframes. If we move XB's whole timeline to 12 frames, we can double how fast he's running. I think that's looking pretty great. We can definitely make some improvements so the animation looks more impressive, but let's save that for another video. I hope to see your own animations. Be sure to use the hashtag voxelize or tag my username at Kamisazi on Twitter or Instagram so I can see it. You can use free tools like OBS or Gazo to take short screen recordings and share them online. I'll leave links to both of those in the description. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like this video, and if you found it helpful, share it with a friend. In the next video about VoxEdit, I'll be going over some tips about how to make your animations really come alive. I'm also learning the new rendering features in the latest release of Magica Voxel that has new cloud and glass material settings, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when those videos are uploaded.